Hi, my name's Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, so I just wanted to give you an update on Project Atomic Phoenix, and this is the project where we are going to resurrect and test with a BN2000 Yule Brown gas generator. So the aim is to repair, test, and reverse engineer this genuine brown gas generator that is on loan to us, and it was the, of the type, uh, or even a bigger capacity than the one that was used to demonstrate remediation of radionuclides and we may uh, uh, and we hope to uh, be able to perform some tests to verify that and we'd like to uh, establish facts about its operation uh, its parameters and its capabilities so uh, this is a picture that was shared uh, at the end of last year uh, as we took possession of it I think on the 23rd of December um, uh, and uh, did some basic disassembly. Um, anyway, so uh, the team uh, we have is myself, and uh, there are various roles which I've put here uh, for various team members, and you can have a look at those. I will share the link with this video. Um, what I would like to uh, uh, say is I'm very happy that uh, Slobodan uh, Stankovic has, uh, from Switzerland has uh, agreed to become part of the team for this testing and evaluation. Uh, the reason this is so important because he is uh, very experienced, uh, uh, nearly a decade and a half of working with um, oxyhydrogen gas, and he's also produced uh, novel tests and novel test equipment uh, to characterize uh, this type of gas uh, and its applications to materials. Uh, and so he can work safely with the gas, uh, which is important for us. And what I've done here in this uh, open document is to include links to his presentations, the present uh, slides that he gave at ICCF 20. Uh, there'll be a link there to his ICCF 20 uh, and 22 uh, uh, presentations. Uh, it's just missing the link there. Um, and uh, there's some test results of uh, another carbon um, uh, analysis uh, for carbon that was exposed to uh, HHO uh, that you can get there. Uh, some other people who are, are working towards assisting with this uh, but are currently undisclosed is a systems engineer. This guy is absolutely top-notch uh, as you'll see uh, if you read this document and uh, he is looking uh, at reverse engineering the electronics and the electrical systems of the generator and the idea is that, that he will then look to recast them in uh, a new modern affordable microcontroller and electronic controls system um, and so uh, uh, the aim would then be to have an uh, open description of how you would do this with modern technology in an affordable way, but also, you know, he would be able to uh, um, provide a package um, uh, for those that are less capable of, uh, you know, designing and building their own systems. And then there's another team uh, that are looking at photonics, and uh, they are looking at uh, optical emissions, um, Slobodan has uh, some good experience with this, as you will see in his ICCF 22 presentation. Um, but this photonics team have got experience in um, maybe understanding more what might be going on in the underlying process, uh, potentially even at the atomic level. And uh, they will be looking potentially at um, uh, muons and so forth and other forms of uh, radiation out. Myself, I'll be using the experience that I gained uh, since 2017 on the observation of strange radiation and so forth. And Alan Goldwater, who's working on our Mizuno application and uh, doing a sterling job there uh, and a methodical job, uh, he uh, will um, has the capability to uh, provide uh, um, uh, affordable SEM and EDS analysis at his Magic Sound lab, and also he has a gas analyzer down there. So if we can capture some gases, we can also look for some potentially synthesized uh, uh, non-natural ratio or rare isotopes of gases. Okay, so 23rd of December, we took delivery of the Brown Gas BN2000 generator, and since then, uh, the systems engineer has had a, a, a deep investigation of uh, the electronics and electrical uh, system there. Uh, it's summarized here, you can go into it, but basically he, he's uh, worked out how pretty much it, it, it works uh, from the sort of uh, where the electricity goes and, and how it's controlled up to a point. Um, 
He's also established uh, that it has an 8031 processor and it's attached to a uh, 2764E EEPROM. And this is where I am calling out for some assistance uh, now. Uh, what he has done is he's uh, been able to um, uh, e extract from the EEPROM uh, the code and uh, done a basic disassembly and so forth and he describes what he's done up to date here uh, and here are the various circuit boards that he's been looking at and he's traced them out so far and essentially uh, what we're going to be able to provide is uh, if you go down to the bottom here um, the IEHEX file from the EEPROM, the ASM code and the assembly using this particular um, piece of software under Linux. Um, and essentially, he describes uh, where he uh, um, needs some assistance uh, in this article, uh, in this uh, live document. And so we are calling for anyone out there that has experience uh, in uh, the uh, uh, code and how to disassemble it. So our current needs right now uh, we need a programmer or programmers with relevant skills to disassemble and reverse engineer the logic on the 2764E PROM, which is attached to a 8031 processor. Um, because uh, we don't know the constituents of the steel that's involved with the uh, uh, electrolyzer, there is a potential it would contain chrome and there's a potential that this might produce hexavalent chromium and so uh, we need uh, uh, to um, source uh, a hexavalent chromium test uh, uh, and do perform that test on the sludge to be extracted from the electrolyzers because we want everyone to be safe uh, obviously it's a, a terrible carcinogen and so we need to know that uh, that isn't present or it can be dealt with um, and then it really comes down to we need funds. Uh, you can see that uh, the um, uh, the work done so far has cost money. Uh, things have had to be bought, uh, and we would need support funds to reimburse the systems engineer for the hardware, software, and, and his miscellaneous purchases to date. And then we really need to make a call out for support funds to recondition the structure of the BN2000 uh, including a uh, badly spelled brazing torch there, hose, lines and tips, and then ultimately um, support for team to conduct tests. But the absolute immediate uh, request that we have right now is uh, for someone with programming ability on the 8031 and uh, who are good at uh, uh, reverse engineering from uh, assembly that's been disassembled. Uh, the manual is here, the code is here, and the control PSU that the, uh, the system engineer is using uh, to uh, test everything. Uh, details are down here, so you can links there. So that, that's it for your update on the BN2000 um, uh, Atomic Phoenix project. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.